Sorry, we are late. I'm done. We need to set up the location. Welcome back to the channel. We are still in our series of Moms in Business. Hi guys, good morning, good morning. Uh, it's a chilly morning. Today is Tuesday. Tomorrow is my birthday. I'm super excited about that. Last year in my 20s. Wow. Yeah, it's exciting. So um, now I'm just reading my book. Uh, this is Shepherding a Child's Heart. This is a book I've been reading with about uh, 20, 19 other moms in a book club called Turning Pages. And it's been amazing. This book is such an eye opener. So if you're a parent out there, find this book i think there are so many copies online like um, ebooks find it and read it and one of the biggest light bulb moments for me in this book is that behavior is not what we are trying to change behavior alone we need to shepherd their hearts and i just want to read um something for you here something in this book that just yeah made me aware of what we need to do as parents <clears throat> let me find it i found it so let me just read it to you um it's talking about how behavior shouldn't be the only thing we focus on but the heart and they say um, the basic issue is always going for what's in the heart remember the heart is the control center of life Parents often get sidetracked with behavior. If your goal in discipline is changed behavior, it's easy to understand why this happens. The thing that alerts you that your child is in need of correction is their behavior. So of course behavior is the one that shows that mm, you need some chivoko or you need some time out or whatever it is that you do. Behavior irritates and, that's and thus calls attention to itself. You think you have corrected when you have changed unacceptable behavior to behavior that you sanction and appreciate. What is the problem, you may ask? The problem is this. Your child's needs are far more profound than this behavior. Remember, 
his behavior does not just spring forth uncaused. Mm? If you are to really help him, you must be concerned with the attitudes of the heart that drive this behavior. And this is something that I've really seen, you know. And we've changed our correction to Ori starting with what is in your heart. King, reign, what is in your heart? Is Jesus in your heart? And just bringing them to a Godward orientation, yeah? And this is what this book is helping us do. So let me give you this example. Hmm? Uh, let's say this, this is a familiar example from any home where there are two or more children. The children are playing and a fight breaks out over a particular toy. The classic response is, who had it first? Isn't that true for you guys? For me, it has happened. If Rain had the toy first, I'm like, who had it first? So leave Rain to have the toy. But this response misses the heart issues. Who had it first is an issue of justice. Justice operates in the favor of the child who was quicker to get the toy. Yeah? But if we look at this situation in terms of the heart, then the issues change. When you're looking at the heart, there are two offenders. Both children are being selfish. Both are saying, I don't care about your happiness. I only, I'm only concerned about myself. I want this toy. My happiness depends on me possessing it. So I will have it and be happy regardless of what that means to you. So both children are hard at heart because they all want it for themselves. And I've seen it at home here. And now we've changed it up. I'm emphasizing that in the Mugisa household, we share, we care for one another. So if someone wants the toy, you have to analyze the issue and think about how can you be kind to your sister or to your brother. Now it's a battle because we are innate, innate we are selfish like by nature. We want what we want. So it's a journey of always teaching them who is in your heart? What's going on in your heart? Why are you hitting your sister? Why are you hitting your brother? Where is that coming from? Yeah. And this book always emphasizes that you must help your child ask the questions that will expose that attitude of the heart that has resulted in the wrong behavior. Guys, this book is just a light bulb. Like every sentence you read is just like, yes, yes. So please get it. It has really helped us in our parenting and I've seen a huge change. The lingua now in our house is what is going on in your heart? Hmm? Is Jesus in your heart? Don't let the devil enter your heart. You know, be kind, be compassionate and things like that. Because even when you're not around or even when environments change, you know, the environment changes, whatever school you take them to, they will always be, you know, drawn to a good word orientation because it starts from the heart. It's, it's just too much. I love it. I love it. So this is a book I'm doing with other moms and we have been impacted. And we are just on chapter... Um, I think now today we are going to discuss chapter 5. Yeah. So that's why I'm reading. Uh, I didn't read throughout the week. So I am crash coursing right now. And hopefully I'll finish before our meeting today. So yeah. That's it. Let me know in the comments what is God teaching you about parenting this season. Let me know. So I put up a poll on Instagram um, and I'm asking people at what stage do you take your child out of the room to another room like your baby. Uh, it's something that I started up last week. I moved Royo to the other room but yo, the fact that you have to wake up and go and feed and then come back and she's still waking up quite a bit. Ah, It's so tiring. It's so tiring. Like, But then I know I need to do it so that you know we can have our own space as a married couple because it's very important that you have your space and you're not interfered eh? with this whole waking up thing you can get intimate at whatever time because the baby is not distracting you yeah so i just want to know let me know in the comments at what stage do you take the baby out of the room is it from birth is it six months um is it one year or are they still in your room <laughs> one year after just let me know yeah so i'm just reading some of the the poll results on instagram and it's funny <laughs> because people are saying oh i'm here to learn some of us are still struggling <laughs> let me know <laughs> 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 
happy, happy birthday. birthday Lisa. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> it's, it's my birthday. I'm going for a movie. Steve is taking me for a movie and then lunch. So it's gonna be a good day, good day. Birthday present! Oh, donuts and more. Just a little package to brighten your day. Wishing you God's blessings. <laughs> I'm sure you're already about to be hungry. <laughs> oh, thank you, Linda. Oh, amazing donuts. Oh, it's a big box. Thank you, Priscilla. Oh, oh. It's my birthday cake from Silla's oven. Thank you, Priscilla. Uh, it's a gift box. Beautiful. Beautiful. Can I say for you? Rain, 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 wait. This is what we say. What what are you saying to her? Happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> oh, happy wow. birthday to you. Hey. Happy birthday to you. Hey. Happy birthday, dear mommy. Hey. Happy birthday to you. Today is Thursday and I'm going to un unbox some of my gifts. I got a few packages and I'm so, so grateful. I got a beautiful bouquet of flowers from my friend Jackie. So beautiful, so beautiful. She also gave me a package. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Let's open it. Oh, wow. It's a watch. A beautiful Versace watch. Love it. My watch had gotten spoiled. So I can't wait to wear this. I can't wait. I can't wait. And a small knot. Oh, dear Lisa, you know you're dearly loved by this household. Glad that we get to do life together. Such a symbol. Thank you, guys. Thank you. And chocolate. So that's amazing then i got a package from Lisa styles hey. <laughs> let me see let me see 
so these are white pants that i've been longing for love them love them thank you so much esther thank you uh what's in here oh hey makeup eyeshadow eyeshadow palette that i really really needed so i love that can't wait to try it thank you esther a wonderful package from Daisy. Oh, I'm a, an eyeshadow palette as well. Love it. Look at the colors. And setting spray for the face after the makeup. I really, really needed this. Thank you so much, Daisy. Thank you so much, Daisy. I unboxed uh, Steve's gifts, he got me jewelry, earrings, necklace that I'm going to be wearing for a long, long time. And then my amazing cousin gave me cake, the cake you've seen. Beautiful cake. Linda, my PA, got me donuts. They were amazing. We'll finish them all, so I don't even have them here. Today, I want to do a self-care day. I want to go for a massage, just relax, spend time with God, reflect, think, strategize. That's what I'm doing today. So yeah, let me take you along. I got me a drink. Self-love is the best love. guys hi today is saturday and i was invited to speak at new life church to speak to amazing ladies uh you know about self-awareness and self-discovery in relationships so i'm pretty excited i've just reached and i can't wait to share yeah i hope they're inspired impacted and i'm praying the holy spirit speaks through me yeah yeah Thank you for having me. Please take your seat. What are you going to bring to the table? Are you kind? Are you generous? For me, one of the things I am so sure I was bringing to the table is even if I lost my job, I would never be poor because I will work, I will usher, I will take that gig, I will color, I will find something to do. I will not sit back. But all those things have to be natural. They don't just happen. Some people say, oh, Lisa is lucky. Where? How? What do you bring to the table? Let's think about it. Two things you're going to do, two or three things you're going to do to increase your value. And then just hear from one or two people something you're going to do to increase your value. Yes?